Okay, some of us like french fries, potato chips, tater tots, there's all sorts of ways. But we're forgetting about one very important contender that is arguably the most versatile. Okay, so today we are making latkes. It's not quite timed very well. I had the idea, I really wanted to make them and eat them, so here we are. If you wanna make them for the appropriate time to eat latkes, then guess what? You have the free will to do so. But here they are nonetheless. These are potato pancakes. Now, right off the top of the dome, if you've never had them before, it kinda sounds a little bit yucky pants, man. But the reality of the scenario is these are the greatest vehicles for so many flavors. The iconic way to eat is with sour cream and applesauce. It's a weird combo. Trust me, I'm gonna be doing three different iterations, all which are gonna be completely different. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? All right, we have three latkes for you. We have Mr. Traditional with, as you may know, appy sauce and creamy sour uh, cream, gravlax and creme fraiche, and finally, a specialty kimchi bonito latke. Now let's begin with Mr. Traditional. Before we even make our base, you better believe we're making our own Fuji applesauce. Nope. No way around it, you gotta make it if you wanna change your life. It's real easy, get four large Fuji apples, peel them all nicely, cut off their cheeks getting as close to the core as possible, or, you know, use a core thingy. Not to be confused with Cora, which is a show. Cut your apple into half inch thick slices and try to keep them nice and even. To that, you're gonna add a third a cup of granulated sugar, half a teaspoon of garam masala or ground cinnamon, if you wanna be vanilla, that's okay. Toss it around to coat, then add one cup of filtered water. Place it on the stove over a medium high, bring it to a boil, and reduce the heat to medium, then cover it with a lid or foil, can never find my freaking lids, and cook for 15 to 20 minutes or until extremely soft and mushy, ushy, cushy. Then pour all that into a blender, blend it on high speed until beautifully smooth, pour that into a bowl and let it cool completely. That's it. That is your applesauce. I mean, look how perfect it is. Now next up is our latke base. Start by peeling three pounds of beautifully rotund and smooth rusted potatoes. Grate all those bad boys and toss them into a large bowl along with one sweet onion that has been peeled and grated as well. Be sure to move quickly here because the potatoes are gonna get too oxidized and brown and that's yucky and I don't like it. With the speed, try not to nick yourself with the grater. It sucks, trust me, I would know. Now, now to the vegetables, add one tablespoon of kosher salt, toss to thoroughly coat, give them a nice squeeze while tossing, and from there, get a clean dish towel, add your potatoes to the center of the towel, gather all the edges like you're picking up a knapsack full of freshly hunted truffles on a dewy French morning. Or maybe a sack of cash or whatever floats your boat. Oh, she's a little juicy. Now holding that over your sink, wring out as much liquid as you can, really squeeze that absolute unit until there's no more drippy drippy. Now from there, place your potatoes into a bowl. Wow, look, it looks kind of like some sort of potato wellington somehow. To that, you're gonna add two large eggs, toss that together to thoroughly combine, then add one third of a cup of fine panko breadcrumbs. Toss that together until thoroughly combined and that is your latke base. Now if it's done right, it should hold together into a nice formed patty pretty easily. If not, then just add an additional tablespoon of panko. To shape these, simply grab a heaping third cup of your potato mixture and gently form and press that into a puck about three quarters of an inch thick and four and a half inches wide. The sizing doesn't really need to be that perfect, these are just parameters for all you people who like to complain. Now, repeat that with all of your potatoes and you'll get anywhere between eight to 12 latkes depending on their size. Now from there, get a large deep heavy bottom pan, add three tablespoons of chicken fat or duck fat and two tablespoons of neutral tasting oil. Once the oil is shimmering and very hot, add in three to four latkes at a time, making sure they don't touch at all. All. Then just let those shallow fry for two to four minutes or until a beautifully golden brown. Then simply flip each and every succulent discus and repeat on the other side. They should be crisp on both sides and soft on the inside. That's the goal here. Now once those are done, place on a wire rack to drain. Season immediately with a touch of kosher salt while they're still piping hot. Now all you need to do is pop one on a plate, hit it with a fat quenelle of sour cream or even creme fraiche if you want something a little more soft. This one is actually creme fraiche, but what else would you expect from me? Follow that up with another equally sizable quenelle of your applesauce from earlier, and look at that. I mean, isn't she lovely? Just wanna kiss it. Let's make one other quick iteration. Get another freshly made potato latke, hit it with an absolutely monstrous quenelle of creme fraiche, layer on some lovely gravlax to your heart's desire, then hit it with some very thinly sliced chives, fresh cracked black pepper, and screw it, maybe a little bit of flaky salt, why not? Boop bop, those are two of the classiest iterations, but let's look at one more less by the book version. First we need a spicy mayo. So start with half a cup of mayonnaise, and to that you're gonna add one and a half teaspoons of gochujang, one heaping tablespoon of the solids from some spicy chili crisp. Yeah, we're getting a little nasty. 
Whisk it all together till thoroughly combined, and then add sriracha to taste. This one I added about two and a half tablespoons. Mix again, and that right there is a lovely, simple, spicy mayo. Now for the latke itself, you're simply gonna make the traditional potato base that we did before, but to that, you're gonna add three quarters of a cup of drained and rough chopped kimchi. Toss all that in, and you shouldn't really need any additional binder, but if you do, you could always just add a touch more panko. Then just fry these guys the same exact way as the other ones. Shallow fry, flip, enjoy its caramelized, crunchy kimchi beauty. Transfer to a wire rack to drain. Now to assemble this failure, place your kimchi latke on a plate, hit it with a nice drizzle of your spicy mayo, a nice bit of toasted sesame seeds, a beautiful layer of very thinly sliced green onion. I mean, real thin. I slice this guy on a pretty steep bias, super thinly, and finally, a generous sprinkle of bonito flakes. Now that is a beautiful kimchi latke, if there ever even was one. Is this even legal? Is this allowed? I'm about to get yelled at for this. I know it. I just know it. Now we have all of our beautiful latke variations that we've made here today. Now let's see which of these three are are the best. So, we have our latkes. The traditional latke, onion, potato, very simple, beautiful. And then we have our kimchi latke, which is sort of inspired by okonomiyaki, hence this. Individual taste test brings me back to my childhood. Perfection. And then the kimchi latke. I actually almost prefer this. It straddles the world of tradition and just a little bit of a culinary twist. And that's what I like. This is the most traditional latke you'll ever see. A sour cream or a creme fraiche and applesauce. It's the only way any first time latke eater should ever eat a freaking latke. If you don't start like this, Papa no kiss, no hug. Papa no even look at you. Holy f I don't even want to describe it to you because I'm forcing you to try this to understand it. Next. I feel like a new man after tasting that. We're in another planet. Smoky Bonito Flakes, the creamy, spicy, chili I can't even talk right now, it's so good. Last but not least is the smoked salmon one. This one is so straightforward. I don't know how good it can really be because I know exactly what it's gonna taste like. If you've ever been to New York and you've never had a smoked salmon latke with creme fraiche, this is your greatest introduction ever, bro. And I look, I know I do chives all the time, all right? And guess what? They're still yummy. My main point is you can use this as a vehicle for many, many flavors. You could have it be very culturally diverse or really simple like this, and it's gonna be good either way. That is the power of a latke. You're welcome. You wanna know what else is full of crunchy potatoes smothered in Papa's cream? B-roll. All right, guys, and that is it. So we made our latkes three different ways. These are one of my favorite things of all time. It's near and dear to my heart. I'm sharing it with you. There are other ways to make them. So anyone in the comments who's like, Josh, wait a minute. I don't do it like that. I do it like Congratulations. What do you want, a f***ing medal? All that matters is that they are yummy. After tasting all these three, I still think that applesauce and sour cream is just the undefeated king of toppings for this. But, I mean, that's a big butt, a big juicy. That kimchi latke, that was something real special. And I'm never gonna forget it. And if you're a latke fan, you need to make that one right away. So with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Papa, very sorry that he posted this at a weird time, okay? It's a little weird. Okay.